Hi, Sonia. It's lovely to see you. Thanks so much for uh, tuning in today on Zoom. Or, or I, as I said, I think to one or two other people, I've seen you so many times running down the home straight or from the, the bend, kicking from 200 metres and, and, and zooming. So it's kind of appropriate we're zooming in and it's kind of what we all have to do at the moment. So uh, thank you so, so much for giving up your time you. and um, for uh, agreeing to be part of this little brave action uh, project that I'm, that I'm involved in. So um, you know what I'm going to ask you to, to, to tell a little brave action story from your own life from sport or life, it doesn't have to be sport. And um, so I'll hand it over to you and tell us your story. Okay, so yeah, I think um, I'm, I'm sure like many people, you could have lots of brave stories and things that you do that kind of, I suppose in a way they kind of lift you up and push you on to the next level. But for me, um, I suppose I had two parts of my career, I always say before 96 and after 96 and 96, uh, Olympics in Atlanta, things didn't go so well. And then in 1997, I was trying really hard to get back up where I felt I belonged. And it was very up and down. So in 1998, I decided to change everything. And um, so I went to altitude training for the first time ever in Australia. And um, when I went training there, my coach said to me, well, you've got to go for at least three weeks. And when I went there, everybody else who was training down it was in Australia a place called Falls Creek and um, everybody else left after two weeks and I still had to stay for an extra week by myself and so this was before I suppose the altitude training in Australia really took off so I was left in this alpine village in the summer pretty much by myself living in an attic of a house and um, so yeah, everybody left the village and I didn't even have a car up there. Um, and a lot of the runs, you needed to have a car to get out to do the decent runs. And then others, you could do some from the village. Um, but because my coach told me that, you know, this is what I had to do to get the most benefit from training at altitude, then I thought, well, I've got to stay here. I can't leave. And so I stayed and I stuck to the training plan. Um, so my husband Nick who was my boyfriend at the time he had to go back down to Melbourne to work and he came back up the following weekend um, but while I was there training by myself like it wasn't hard to train by myself because I had a program so you just went out and did what you were supposed to do um, but there was very few people in the village there was a, a, a restaurant next door and I remember I went in and got talking to the girl in there she did some sports massage and while we were talking she also said to me um, that she had some tea and scones. And I said, oh, I can make you some scones if you like. And she said, well, if you make some scones, I'll give you a loan of my car. <laughs> so we did a little bit of a barter trade there and that worked out. And yeah, so I got my three weeks of training in and then came down to Melbourne and ran a lot of races. And this was all in preparation for the World Cross Country in Marrakesh. Um, so I knew I was really fit. It was the first year that the World Cross Country was being split into two races. There was a long race and a short race. And um, I had always thought maybe I would do the short race because I was a bit faster. But my coach said, no, you, we all know that the long race is the real race. So, you know, again, I had to, you know, accept that. And, you know, you have to be brave when you accept something like that and take on the challenge. Um, and when I went to Marrakesh, I ran the race and, and I won the race in 1998. But then the very next day, it was the short race. And up to that point, I hadn't even thought about running the second race. I hadn't even considered it. And um, while um, having lunch the day before and um, another athlete from America, Bob Kennedy, he kind of was talking to me, assuming that I was running the next day. And all of a sudden, the idea entered my head. And I knew it was, you know, it was not going to be an easy thing to do. But once the thought was in my head, I couldn't put it aside. I had to do it. And, you know, I knew it was a risk to do it. Um, I suppose looking back, it was a brave thing to do. And, you know, brave can be strong, but brave can also be risky. And I didn't even call my coach because, well, I didn't call him on the Saturday because I didn't want him to talk me out of it. I called him on the way to the start line on the Sunday. And, you know, everybody was afraid that, you know, I would wreck winning the world championships by going out and, you know, kind of not doing as well the next day. But somehow I had it in my head that, you know, there was nobody here who I couldn't beat. 
but I wasn't really taking into account that I'd run an 8K cross country race the day before. Mm-hmm. And um, so when we started off the race and two girls went very fast at the start and initially I was thinking, oh, what have I done here? <laughs> you know, have I, have I made the right decision? And eventually as, you know, when we look back, we all know it ended up happily ever after. And I also won the short race. So I definitely think, you know, that year I, did a few brave things to kind of move away from what I suppose was the safety and security of what I knew from the past. Um, did a few different things and took on some new challenges and, and was successful. And then by being successful, I gained a lot of confidence and belief in myself that, you know, I had lost a bit of that over, over the previous couple of years. Wow, Ghani, that's <laughs> that, that's one <laughs> of a year of a brave story, Sonia, I'm telling you. Um, like we're, we're, there's so many things that people could take away from that between, as you say, again, in the world as we as we are living it now, being isolated and going and doing something that was brave on your own. And then, you know, I love the way you say kind of you made your own decision and you decided about the race as well. And I know and I love your comment where you said, you know, being brave can be strong, but and showing great strength and purpose, but also it's a risk. And we often have to in life weigh up those risks, you know, with the benefits. And and being brave often is, as, as John Wayne says, it's 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 feeling the fear, but you know, saddling up anyway. So uh, you saddled up. Yeah, I think times. when once you make a decision, you just have to go with it and you have to you like we always say you have to back yourself and believe that you know you can follow through with what you want to do. Very true. And a couple of other athletes, young athletes who uh, I've been very lucky to zoom in with as well, um, have said exactly the same things is that, you know, it's important to trust yourself and back yourself. And, you know, that's, that's just you learn through life experience that some of the, the greatest things happen when you do that. So listen, um, thank you so much for, for giving us that amazing story. I'm sure lots of people who hear this story will, uh, will benefit from it. And, uh, and, and again, having an, an icon of Irish sport, give the message out. There's no better person for to, uh, for to articulate it um, as well and as clearly and to, for them to be able to relate as well in some way in their own lives. So listen, thank you so, so much. I really appreciate you zooming in with me today. And, uh, and I hope to see you again soon. And, uh, and we'll have a, a real coffee as opposed to any kind of virtual chats or coffees. All right. So mind yourself, Sonia. We chat soon. Take care. Okay. Thanks very much. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Good luck with it.